If you've ever tried soldering something on a circuit board like a tiny resistor or one of these chips, you really can't do that without some type of help. Now you could buy something like this, it's uh, called Helping Hands and basically a glorified magnifying glass with alligator clips. But even that's not going to get you the level of detail you need to accurately and reliably repair these micro components. But what if I told you there's something out there that can take your micro soldering efforts from frustrating to flawless? Today, we're taking a look at the Joy Allen's Digital Microscope. Now, whether you're a hobbyist fixing gadgets like me, a professional working with intricate PCBs, or simply curious about upgrading your toolkit, a good microscope can be a game changer. It was one of the first things I bought when I started this channel, and you can see me using it as far back as my, I think, seventh video on this channel. And I've been using one ever since because, let's face it, modern electronics are shrinking. Gone are the days of wires and breadboards. If you're going to work on game consoles or really any electronic device, you're going to want a microscope for soldering. They enhance your visibility, reduce strain, and improve your accuracy. Without magnification, you risk bridging joints, misconnections, or damaging the board. A microscope not only helps you see your work, it helps you control your work. Not all microscopes are created equal though, and there are a ton of options out there, especially for micro soldering with prices ranging from somewhere around $75 all the way up to you know, over $500 for some of these things. Now I've been using this microscope that I bought off AliExpress for well over a year and it's done okay for me. You know, it's, it's, it's worked, I'll say that. There have been some issues that I'll get to a little later in the video, but it's seen me pretty far on my journey. But today I'm very happy to try out this Joy Allen digital microscope. And full disclosure before we even get into it, Joy Allen did send this over for free. That being said, I'm going to give an honest overview of the microscope and try to point out things I think it does well, as well as some little flaws I've already noticed. First, we have to get this out of the box and assembled, and luckily it's a very simple tool to assemble. This microscope isn't just for micro soldering, so it does come with three different sized lenses. So you can look at coins, as well as even smaller things like plants and bugs and such. I have no interest in those aspects of it, but I imagine it fulfills those roles just as well as it fulfills the role of micro soldering. This scope comes with an integrated screen, so you can see just what you're doing right in front of your face. That's the difference between something like this and one of the far more expensive microscopes where you're looking through the optics. I've never really liked the idea of having to bend over and peer through an actual microscope while soldering, I've always been more partial to having a screen to look at. And because of the nature of the work I do with YouTube, I need it to record as well. You could install a scope like this on one of the stereoscopic microscopes, but then you're buying the stereoscopic microscope and you're buying this, which is just going to be more money and no one wants that. Now that I've got this assembled, we can see just how well it all works. It's very nice having this scope be an all-in-one machine. Using my other microscope, I had to have a connection to a monitor which was off-centered, so I was constantly glancing to the left to see what I was doing. The scope also includes two gooseneck lights, which really help with the lighting situation. The gooseneck lights do a great job of reducing the glare that goes into the microscope because it's not just straight down like the ring light that I used on my old microscope. So this is actually a much better setup than what my old scope used. The picture quality is amazing. It, it truly is. The scope is easy to focus, easy to get dialed in right where you want. You can zoom in and now a little using the knob on the side. And you can, of course, adjust the distance of the scope itself. The screen tilts up and down and it can be rotated side to side as well. So you're never going to be at a loss to get the perfect angle. You can even angle the scope if needed to get just what you want in focus. This thing can record to a micro SD card and it comes with a 32 gigabyte one. Just don't insert the SD card while it's on or else it'll turn itself off. It does record at 1440p, but it's limited to 30 FPS at that resolution. I prefer to have it at a higher frame rate while working because I think it, it just makes the picture clearer. Uh, there's less of a ghosting effect. I think the motion is smoother and less jarring for my eyes, but I'm not sure it makes any difference to the videos. I'll take as YouTube's compression probably just nullifies that frame rate anyway. There are other settings you can mess with to adjust for like the color and saturation, but 
I found it to be pretty good straight out of the box. Uh, all I'm looking for is a clear picture to help me with soldering tiny components and it provided that. This specific scope comes with a 10 inch screen and that is the size I would recommend. It's nice having the larger real estate to look at. The monitor I was using was bigger obviously, but this is closer and it feels a little bit more intimate that way. I think if it was a smaller screen, you're, you're basically taking the image it gives you and compressing it down, probably making it harder to see the components at that distance. So I, I like having the larger screen that this one has, which is really nice. It does come with an HDMI cable, so you can hook it up to a monitor or TV, but in that mode, it doesn't record the video, so that's not something I'm gonna use. You can see here just how large the screen is and how well it shows my tweezers, my soldering iron tip, and the connections all over the board. Everything is just so crisp and clear and stable, which is one of the great features of this scope over my previous microscope. That one just would not stay still. The original boom arm it came with was so small and light, it would always move up or down and get out of focus. I spent so much time trying to dial it in while in the middle of working that it really got frustrating. On top of that, the power cable for it and the ring light would constantly tug at it. Uh, also, the HDMI port would you know pull on it and it would pull it out of alignment and pull it out of focus because this one, when you have it set up and it's focused, when it goes up and down, it go it gets out of focus. And this one would move up and down on the boom arm a lot more than the new one does. So it would constantly be getting out of focus and I'd have to readjust and hold it there. And with those cables pulling on it, it would drift away from the subject, making it even more frustrating. I eventually installed this microscope on a heavy duty monitoring arm, but it still gave me the issues with wanting to drift out of focus and away from the subject. So far, this one doesn't seem to have that issue. Now, for a few criticisms of it, it doesn't really zoom in far enough using the knob on the side. It's kind of a smaller range. So you really do have to kind of adjust it along the neck if you want to zoom in real close or you get it far away. I do wish the range for this gear here was a little bit like longer so you wouldn't have to adjust two things to get the zoom level you want, but it is what it is. One issue it does have, and this is sort of an issue with all of these built-in screen microscopes, is that its base is pretty small. It's heavy, which is good. I don't have any fear of it tipping over, but it is a little on the small size. So if you're gonna be working on bigger boards like Xbox and PlayStation motherboards, you might have some issues with it not being even. It doesn't wanna lay flat. When working on it, it would kind of rock on there. And that's just something you're gonna to have to get used to or come up with another solution for. I've been using these wooden blocks to help lift the board off of the desk anyway before. So I think that's something I'll use here. I have seen other people who've taken these types of microscopes and installed them on, you know, like a monitoring arm or a boom arm that's more heavy duty and more stable. And that might be an option if you're wanting to invest in that. It's just something to note. And if you're working on smaller boards, it's probably not gonna be a problem at all. There's also a little limited mobility in where you can position the scope relative to the board you're working on. It slides in and out and obviously up and down and side to side, but that's really about it. So if you can't get the part of a board you're working on under the scope, you're gonna have issues. Again, only a real issue on the bigger boards like an Xbox or PlayStation motherboard, but it is something to consider. You know, if you're doing HDMI ports or something where you typically hang it over the side of your desk, this might present a challenge, though it is light enough that it's not that hard to pick it up and move it closer to the front of your desk, so. And it does come with this remote that's attached that adjusts the brightness of the lights, as well as turns it off. Another benefit of this over my previous microscope setup is it's only one cord. This one cord powers the screen, the microscope, and the two gooseneck lights. My previous setup had a power cord for the microscope, the ring lights, I had these two lights I tried to use to reduce glare at times, and I had to have a monitor on to see what I was doing. That's five power outlets being replaced by one, which means I can keep more of my tools actually plugged in and not have to go under the desk and you know do the little switcheroo when I'm needing to use a you know, voltage injection tool or the hot air gun. So that's nice. 
It really helped declutter that area, taking this setup and transforming it into this. If you're serious about soldering, a microscope isn't just a tool, it's a necessity. And I think this is one of the best microscopes out there. I'm sure it's very similar in features and such as to the other designs, but this is a design I would recommend. And this is a microscope I would recommend. Yes, Joe Allens did send it to me for free, but I'll be honest, I was in the market for a scope like this already because of the problems I was having keeping this one focused and stable. It was kind of annoying and I, I really, unless you have a strong boom arm already that this will fit into, I'm not sure I actually recommend this style anymore. The issues I had with it not wanting to stay focused and drifting out of the work area were starting to really frustrate me. And the last thing I need, especially as someone who isn't that great at micro soldering is for my tools to give me trouble. So if you're in the market for a microscope, I highly recommend this style of scope. And I do recommend this scope specifically. It's currently $170 on Amazon. So it's a bit pricey, but it is in line with other similar scopes. And there's a seven inch screen available for 140 though. I really do like the size of this 10 inch screen. And a big thank you to Joy Allen for sending this over. I really love the way it declutters my work area and I can't wait to put it to work and fix more electronics. I'll leave an affiliate link down below if you're interested in checking it out. And I just got it and unboxed it. So if in the future I have any issues with it, anything that would make me either not recommend it or I think you should know about, I'll be sure to update that in the comments down below. Please let me know down in the comments what style of microscope you either have or you have your eye on. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something useful from it. And if you did, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe for more videos like this and we'll catch you in the next one.